ah, you know what an excellent idea is right before you sit down to uh, have a live show, like uh, wear yourself out creating a display behind you. It's, it's, and I, I advise it. Um, Whew. Hey everyone. <laughs> How are you? If you are just joining us and even if you're watching this on the replay, let me know in the comments where you are watching from. As you know, every week we get to see there's so many people from all over the world. It's a big global party and we get to talk travel and even meet some new friends. So please in the chat, let me know where you're from. I am going to bring my heart rate back down. <laughs> I'm really excited about today's show, so I'm super happy that you're here with me today because it's funny, you know, this is something that I personally, I've been traveling for 25 years now, and, and um, so much of this is, it's um, innate, it's, um, it's like, I would say second nature, but like first nature, I don't think about it. Right. I just, it, it's just something that I've mastered and it, I just do it. And then I really, the last few months I've been thinking about how I can bring more value to you as someone who also loves travel and help you do some of the things that I do. And how do I break that down? And so it's really been an exercise in forcing me to figure out how to share the fundamentals of things that I do so that you can have a better time when you travel. So I really, I really spent a lot of time on this. So I hope you enjoy it as much as me. Let's see where everybody is from. Isabel, Netherlands. Hey, Pia from Sweden. Meredith from SoCal. Loving it. Loving it. Coming. We've got good weather today, don't we, Meredith? Although, what am I talking about? We always have good weather. Um, I'm also in Southern California. So, uh, Fiona. <laughs> Fiona, I am so excited because your luggage is on its way to you. Isn't this gorgeous? This is what I was doing like seconds before I went live. I wanted to put up this beautiful luggage and it it's so nice. I'm so excited for you. Um, how do you get this luggage, by the way? Well, you have an opportunity. If you are, if you book and take my Poland tour, which closes tomorrow, you can go in June, you can go in late August to September. If you book it by tomorrow and you are on that tour, I'm sending you this luggage. It is gorgeous. And I can talk about it more, but I saw Fiona's name and I was like, yay, Fiona, it's coming. Um, and also, uh, if you book my Georgia tour, which closes two weeks from tomorrow, you will also get all three pieces of this luggage. But that's not what we're here to talk about at the moment. Let's see where everybody else is. Patricia is hitting the pool. You're also in Southern California. So Lynette is Calgary, Ca Canada. Oxford, hello, hello from Oxford, UK. St. Charles, Missouri. Uh, Pennsylvania, Kathy's joining us. Amanda is in Nashville. Hey, Shirley, hello. Okay. So today, Pennsylvania, there you are, Beth. So today, what we're talking about is creating your own itinerary. And, you know, when you're planning a trip, there's just, there's so many moving parts, right? There's, there's deciding where to go and how many, how long to go, uh, how to get there, where to stay, what's an absolute must to see, what can you take off? How much cheesy bread can you eat in one day? What can you do without completely exhausting yourself? So there is an actual science to it. And that's what I want to share with you today. Um, because, you know, planning a trip can be daunting, but it doesn't have to be. It can be, it can even be fun. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to share with you some of my step-by-step -step breakdowns on how I plan a trip. So uh, is anybody joining us today that is in the, um, is starting to plan a trip? It is in the active stages of planning a trip. And um, hit like for me or tell me uh, what you are, if you're planning. And if this is something that you're going to just learn today and take for you next time, hit love because we all love to dream about travel. Um, I see, oh, some margaritas later for Cinco de Mayo. That's right. Driving in the Chicago rain, Lori. Ah, Todd is in Palm Springs. Hey, Todd. Sandra is in Chicago. Okay, we have two Chicago people checking in and it is raining. Um, one can eat a lot of cheesy bread. That's true, Shirley. You have to kind of get into practice for it, but I suggest you do. Um, so this is building on last week's episode where I talked about the discovery and the editing phase. And so if, uh, if you asked for the notes for that, they are coming. Um, side note, if you asked for the notes for the travel journal uh, episode, which was a couple weeks ago, you should have it in your inbox. Actually, by this morning, <laughs> we were busy getting that to you as well. If you asked for it and you did not receive the travel journal notes, put journal in the comments. And if you, and if you didn't 
know about it or you didn't think to ask, also put journal in the comments and I'll make sure that you get the notes. That one was dense and probably one of my favorite episodes. It was so good. So make sure that uh, you receive those. And if you want last week's, this is a really good foundational piece because I gave you some tips on how to kind of get your dream list going and all the things that you could find, um, all the things you could do, and also um, how to edit it down using uh, my one of my favorite free tools, which is My Maps. So if you didn't get that, put um, put discovery in the um, in the comments because that's sort of the discovery phase. So make sure, and if you, again, as always, if you just want the written notes for this, make sure you put notes and today you'll get that information. So, um, and also, if you guys are loving all of this, uh, all these fun shows I'm putting together, please share them. Please tag a friend that may get something out of it or just hit the share button right now so people know they can come join this party. And uh, so let's get started. Um, oh, oh, I forgot. I, as always, I have a fun giveaway. I love looking for giveaways for you guys. So let me see if I can... <sighs> I did take a picture of this so I could explain it to you because it seems kind of fun. Um, so hold on a second. Bear with me as I dip my toe in the messy world of screen sharing. Um, it's saying, can you see it? Is it allowing you to see it? Uh, it's always a problem. Let me, let me, I think it's, let me try one more time. And if not, we will just move on. Share. Yeah, it says I don't have permission. It's my, who else is giving the permission? It's me. Anyway, okay. <laughs> so what this is this week, what you win this week is, it's a flex flap mobile phone or tablet holder. And it's really cool because it's flat and it has a nice base, but then it has, um, it folds and you can stick it in the seat pocket in front of you. So you can just hands-free watch your, uh, your phone while you're on the plane or your tablet. And you can even use it to set up and watch, you know, on your bedside table. So I will send that to you. How do you win? Whenever you hear anything today that I say that is like, oh, that's cool, or it resonates with you, you're like, that's a great travel tip. Please put the word nugget in the comments and then put just a few words about that travel tip. Most of you know because you've gotten your prizes already, very exciting. But if you wanna to win today, make sure you put in the comments, nugget, and then what it is that I said that we, that was like a aha moment. Um, so yes, thank you so much again for joining me. If you haven't joined me before, I'm Juliana Dever. I'm an experiential travel expert. I've been traveling for 25 years. I've lived in four countries. I've been to over 60 and I run tours, cultural immersion tours in Eastern Europe, in Poland, in Slovenia, and Georgia. And there's still time for you to join me this summer. So if you have questions about that, just DM me. So let's get into the meat of this because it's fun and I worked really hard on it. So I'm really excited. Um, so how do you plan your travel? And this is, um, we talked about discovery and edit, like I mentioned last week, but now I want to talk about you have your list, right? You know, you kind of, you know where you want to go. So Let's move on to day by day. How do you kind of put these pieces together so you know when you're going, where you're going when? And I do, here's what I wanna talk about for a minute because there might be some people that are like, ah, I just wanna show up somewhere. And um, and that's how you do it, you just do it like that. Um, and I get you, I do. And I'm gonna talk about that a little bit more because I 100% I want you to always think about having free time in your day even building a free day where you don't really have any plans where you can kind of go where the wind takes you and of course some of those trips where you know my husband and i once we went on a trip where we knew we wanted to drive around ireland we didn't make hotel reservations we, we just wandered around and we didn't always find a place like the perfect place to stay but it was its own kind of adventure but i'm not really talking about that what i'm talking about is a trip where you want to get the most out of it and so i want to say to you why do we plan a trip why am i suggesting that you plan a trip um first of all because you want to get what you came for right and that's you're spending time you're spending money you are spending like the the physical effort to go somewhere that's not nothing um even if it's a privilege to get to do it the act of doing it can be exhausting. <laughs> so 
don't put in the work, put that time and the effort and the money into it and then just wing it. Um, because, you know, like, let's say, what if, what if you're a fan, a fan of like treehouse hotels and you didn't do any research at all and you wind up staying at a Best Western and there was the most amazing treehouse hotel three kilometers, miles away from where you were staying? You know, like, don't, what if you're, um, a Titanic fan. And what you didn't know was there just happened to be a, a museum in the city center that has like some artifacts from the sister ship. And you didn't know, like, get what you came for, like get the most out of it. Right. So that's one reason that we plan. The second reason that we plan is you will waste your precious vacation time if you wait to get somewhere and then start looking for things to do. And I've done this, so these are my mistakes that I want you to learn from. But planning ahead allows you, uh, you know, it, it allows you to hold on to that free time and not have that dreaded, like, I don't know, what do you want to do? That time suck of like sitting on your phone and you're like missing the sunset on a terrace in Italy during aperitivo hour because you're like scrolling through your phone looking for where to get prosciutto in Italy, you know? like. Do yourself a favor, do it before you get there. Another thing is freedom. Actually, the freedom to, when you plan ahead, your brain space is clear, right? Because you've already done the work and now you kind of know where you want to go every day. And so you can have the, the luxury of spontaneity and you have the luxury of not um, like thinking about what am I doing next? You know, you're not spinning on that. You're present. You're paying attention to what's happening in front of you. And you have the freedom to follow through with your plan or pivot, right? And do something totally different. But you're, you're not, your brain's not running like an app in the background thinking, oh, what, 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 did, what am I supposed to do? Oh, is that museum open tomorrow at 10? Should I, you already know this, you can relax. And it's something, you know, when you think about the idea of like a trip can be, you know, it can be exploration and it can also be restoration and it can be both if you have planned ahead, because if you're aware of this concept, you know, you have your, your nervous system, your sympathetic part of your nervous system, which is the response mode, right? This is, it's always ready for an activity. It's always ready for a response. And so you're kind of a little keyed up or you can move into the parasympathetic response, which is actually like a rest and digest phase. And it's something that is restorative. So you can sit there and enjoy your Aperol spritz and look at the sunset because you're not like, I got to think about what, what are we doing for dinner tonight? You know? So I want you to think about being kind to yourself when you travel and when you plan, that is actually being kind to yourself. So those are the four reasons why I recommend that you actually create an itinerary beforehand. Um, I want to make sure so many good nuggets. Um, let's see. Oh, and Pia, I just, I want to make sure you're starting to plan a trip for next year. Hopefully this is so super helpful for you. Um, yes, plan ahead. Right, Kay? I mean, the other thing you can do is just take a trip with, from, with me because I've already planned everything. Then you just got to show up. That's amazing. Kay knows she's been with me. Um, yes, Lynette, exactly. Like, Planning ahead saves time suck. Yes, planning ahead, Fiona, you know, this is, I'm so glad that you're picking up on this. Planning ahead can lead to these unexpected finds, right? Like this is exactly what I'm saying. I love that this is exactly what you're getting. And Beth, same thing. Planning ahead so you don't miss something awesome. Um, and it is, yeah, it's a tricky balance be be between planning and winging. And I'm gonna, we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna go into it a little bit more, but I wanna set you up for being able to respond to these things because you have that relaxed uh, state of knowing that you've already kind of got yourself covered, okay? Um, yes, so we've got it. Uh, yeah, this is exactly right, Tammy. You're, you're totally onto it. Planning ahead, it helps you live in the moment. Love it, love it, loving all of you because you are on the same page with me. So let's move into the kind of the two. So last week we talked about discovery and editing. So making the big list, list and then how do we pare it down? And um, if you were here for that, you know that I showed you the most amazing trick, which is using Google My Maps, not Google Maps, but My Maps. So if you don't know how to create those maps, make sure that you put discovery in the notes so I can send that to you so you can watch that episode and also get the notes about how to create the map. So those of you that watched it already last week, you're, you're with me. You know we've got like this, this kind of 
overview of a place and we kind of know where we want to go now and we sort of know all right this one was too far-fetched for this time so i'm gonna i'm gonna narrow my focus to this place so now we have we have the next two phases one um that i'm calling the coordination we have the uh, organized phase and the coordination phase so in the organized phase we're looking at organizing all the things that are now on our must list now we know these are the things we want to do how do we decide what day to do what and again this is a rough plan and we'll talk about how i really want you to just you know use this as your your outline your sketch right so i'm going to show you i'm going to go back i i better be able to show you my screen for this because this is muy importante so hold on a second share screen I did so much work on this. I will sit down and cry if I can't share it with you. Okay. Okay. You guys can see my screen, right? Let me just make sure. Um, <laughs> while I'm double checking to see that you can uh, um, <laughs> see my screen. I love Lori has got nugget for me. Look at, look at Lori here. Prior Proper prior planning prevents piss poor for performance. I feel like either you're a genius and you just made that up or you've heard to in your life, Lori. <laughs> okay, you guys can see it. Amazing. All right, so here's what I want to show you. So I threw this together really quick this morning so that you could get an idea. And so for this example, I'm showing you Paris. Now, everyone who is in love with Paris, yes, there's a gabillion things I could have put on here, but just bear with me. I threw some stuff off the top of my head on here. So, you know, looking at it, You've got some stuff that's kind of centralized. You've got, you know, we've we've got the the circus museum way out here that's just like, oh, I really want to see that. You know, you've got the the catacombs down here. You've got, you know, how do I you're looking at this and you're like, well, now what do I do? I've got all this stuff. Whoa. Let me just zoom straight into Paris. How do I do with this information? This is all the stuff I want to do, but blah, right? <laughs> This is literally how I talk to myself. Wah. So here's what I want you to think about. So you kind of got a mental picture of this. Yeah. Um, I want to talk to you for a second about the coordination phase of all of this. So you see, you see what I just did. I have my edit list. I discovered stuff that I wanted to do. I plotted it on my Google Maps. And so I've edited it down. And I'm like, okay, now. There are four things, and again, this is what I was talking about earlier. If you join me a little bit later, what I was saying was I really forced myself to think of the things that are kind of innate after 25 years of travel and planning trips for other people and break them into some fundamental bite-sized pieces that I can share with you. So here's what, what I've determined. There are four things that I always consider when I think about now what, and that is, and is the energy, and when I say that, I mean kind of your physical energy. How much energy am I going to have on a given day? Um, and then there's attention. And this is mental. Like how much attention do I have? So like energy, like I want to tell you, you know, don't, you're not a robot. You're not a machine and you're not going on, on a trip to exhaust yourself, right? So don't, and don't pile on too much when you arrive. I think sometimes, especially for people in North America traveling to Asia to especially South America, North America, we're on a similar time zone. But when we're going to Asia, we're going to Europe for this example, Europe, we forget to to give ourselves the grace of acclimating to a time zone because we're like, oh, my goodness, I'm here. I got to get everything. I want to see everything right away. Don't do that. Just don't like allow yourself to start to acclimate. Right. So Number one, think about your physical energy. Don't pile too much on any given day, especially if it's a travel day. Um, and you know, when you have a jet lag day, how do you plan that day? And I'll show you, I'll just kind of show you how I broke it down. Walks are great. Walks are great. You get fresh air, you get sunshine, you get vitamin D, which resets your circadian rhythm and allows you to actually go to bed at a proper time. So Getting outside and taking a walk on a travel day is a great way to help you start adjusting. Um, low attention activities. What do I mean by that? So let's go into point number two. 
which is your mental attention. What do you have on your list that needs focused attention? Like maybe you're going to take a class, you're going to take a, 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 a tango class, or you're going to take a, a cooking class, or you're going to attend a lecture or a performance where you need to stay awake, um, which is you know, respectful. So, so do you need some, you need focused attention or do you need like a, a passive attention? So maybe that, that passive attention is enjoying sitting at a park and taking in the, the scenery, the ambiance. So well, how much attention are you going to need for these activities? The third piece is kind of the absorption rate, you know, that stimulation. So because when you get overstimulated, and you all know this, when you're overstimulated, you shut down, you get cranky, you get bored, you stop. You're like, remember that first castle that you ever saw? <laughs> and then you're like, ah, castles. Ugh. I'm so, and I don't mean the TV show, which I don't know, has anyone ever seen it? It's pretty good. Um, but when you see your first castle in another country, and you're like, this is amazing. And then Third castle, you're like, I swear if I see one more castle, I'm gonna jump. So you know what I mean? But that's because you've been overstimulated. You've got, a, your absorption rate is now that you cannot continue to do that without some balance. Um, museums, you know, it depends on how long it is, what it needs, but this is another thing, absorption rate. Like you can only do so much museum before you really can't Andy Warhol anymore, right? Um, and then the fourth thing is, um, like processing rate. And what do I mean by that? I mean, you need to build free time into your schedule. So every day, if you can, you really need to slow down and kind of process what you've been experiencing. Maybe that even means, you know, that you travel journal a little bit. Um, but you can, I would even say build a day where you don't have anything planned at all. And you really can just go wherever the wind takes you because you get to process that you're not thinking. But that free day, is a reward for having plans because you know if you set out walking and you know you were like oh i wanted to go to the the you know Bois de bologna i'm just gonna go yeah i'll just take a walk over there i don't know we'll see what happens maybe i'll have a croissant maybe i'll meet some guy playing the accordion maybe juliana will get super stereotypical about paris you know what i mean but you have that free day built in because you allowed yourself to have processing time so those four things which again is the um it's the physical energy it's the mental attention it's the absorption rate or the stimulation rate and the processing time i want you to always think about these things so now i want to show you and i want to show you oh and i and i when we one thing i want to make sure too is that you know like always be um allow yourself to be flexible because you could have a beautiful day outside planned and then it rains all day and then you got to switch it for a museum day you know these things but i'm just throwing it out there but i want to now i want to get back here and make sure if you answer any questions oh my goodness all the nuggets slow down and proceed i didn't i didn't build any days surely surely we know we know each other <laughs> you have to build three days in because that's when you get spontaneous. That's when you go to, if you watch the travel journaling episode, Lavinia, the amazing woman who wrote the book about travel journaling, she's like, give yourself a quest. It's when the most fun things happen. You meet people. So maybe you, you're like, I don't know, I'm going to go look for a, a travel uh, alarm clock. And then you just start wandering in the shops and then, you know, oh, is this your shop? Do you have this? And then people want to share with you. And then all of a sudden you're at someone's house eating lunch. Like you, those days can't happen unless you say today the deck is cleared um let's see but yes build free time into the schedule currently binging yay sandra uh yes schedule your recovery time adjust acclimate you guys are getting it you guys are getting it look at this sending you a virtual gold star thank you <laughs> is that all for all my work <laughs> um yeah tammy you got it it's it's uh, adding processing time. This I can't stress this enough. And before I go into the practicality of showing you how these concepts work in execution, um, did I tell you guys this? I went on a trip to Mongolia and, um, and I did not plan this trip. I was invited and there is a curse that a lot of destinations were very excited to share the, the beautiful bounty that is their destination they mistake 
that you need to be moving at all times. I actually can think of two examples where I had meltdowns. Um, and one of them was in Mongolia. And I was on a trip with other, um, um, I think I told you guys this, right? Uh, if you heard this story, let me know. But yeah, I was on a trip with some other travel people, some travel agents. And they had us, like, we would drive, we would get up at 7 a.m. every morning and get in a four-wheel Jeep and drive across the Gobi Desert, no roads, just pull over and go to the bathroom and some rocks. And then, like, we would get to a get to a temple and they'd be like, put your luggage down. Now we're going to go up to this mountain to see this Buddhist temple. And then we're going to come down and then we're going to have this activity. I'm not kidding when I tell you, nervous system, the sympathetic response, that fight or flight, that... I I had a breakdown. Like I literally started crying and the other travel agents, we, we got to this one place and it was beautiful and there were yaks everywhere and they were so cute. And the, and the other um, travel agents too, they, they took their shoes off and they opened a bottle of gin. I don't know where they brought that from. <laughs> and, they, and they sat down in front of their yurt and they were like, nope, nope, none of us are going, none of us are doing it. I was like a dirty, dusty mess. Like, this is what happens. You think you're like, oh, I'll sleep when I get home. No, you can, you stop enjoying it. It's miserable. Please give yourself free time. Sorry, that was a tangent, but I needed to share. Um, okay, so <laughs> uh, see, oh, see, Kathy. Yeah, look at this. I, I'm like you, Shirley. I do options for different days, but very little free time. You don't. I don't want anyone to feel any shame. Look, if you, I'm just telling you. You guys know how you feel. You start to get overwhelmed. I want you to be happy when you travel. So let's go into, let me share you, share with you my screen yet again. And I am gonna share, let's see. So here's how in practice, in execution, this looks, okay? So same exact map that I showed you before where I had all these ideas. And what I did just for fun is, okay, let's say I have five days in Paris. Now you saw everything that was um, all the things. And now I'm gonna say, okay, you know what? That first day, I made my first day red. I made it like a rainbow. And then day two is orange. And then day three is yellow and then green and blue. So day one, I've decided I'm gonna stay over here in the 11th at this hotel I really like. And you know what? I am, um, I'm gonna go walk through the Marais. So I'm going to take a walk through the Marais, and then I'm going to go over to the island over on Ile Saint-Louis, and I'm going to go to Bertillon. Mmm, yeah, really good ice cream. Um, you know, I'm going to have an ice cream. I'm going to stroll around. I'm going to take it easy. I'm probably going to conk out. I might even have to go back and take a nap. And if not, then I'm going to go to dinner at one of my absolute favorite restaurants in Paris, Obermama, right? And that's it. But you know how long you're out walking is up to you. You can see so much just taking a stroll and having a nice meal, having a, a gelato, and that's it, okay? Don't push it. Day two. Now, I, you know, I looked again at all of these things, and I started grouping them together, and I started looking like, well, let's kind of stay in one place. No, let's not go crazy. So day two, I've got a little more energy. And so, you know, maybe what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by going over to the Palais Garnier. And I, I actually really do recommend that you see it. It's the Opera House in Paris. So gorgeous. It's stunning. Do it in the morning while you have energy. And then, you know, go over to, let me zoom in a little bit. You know, and then I decide, you know what, now I'm going to go over to Gallery Lafayette. And a lot of people go here to shop. I wouldn't shop. Just go to the top floor. I'm going to load across all the rooftops of Paris, take some photos. And then, you know what, I am going to have lunch if I feel like it. If not, maybe something will catch my eye right here. But if I don't, I know I have a backup plan not too far away. I'm going to go eat lunch over here at Le Souffle which is a super place to have every food you've ever had blended and cooked into a souffle. And then, you know what? I do still have a little residual jet lag. So I put guitar because I don't really have any other like hangout at a park thing. So one of my favorite things to do is um, on the Louvre, on the lawn, everybody just like chills out. Like sometimes I'll get a baguette or whatever. And you just sit on the lawn and just soak it up and you can see all the way down to the Place de la Concorde to the to the um, uh, Champs-Elysees, you can see across the, and the sun sort of sets there, it's beautiful, but you're just relaxed, you're just sitting, it's good. Okay, so that's how I put day two. I'm kind of judging my energy. I'm kind of judging my, what I can absorb. Um, now day three, you know what? I've got some energy today and I didn't hit it too hard last night. 
right? So I am going to get, I'm going to go down here uh, to the Austerlitz station and I'm going to go see the Versailles. I personally, I went all the way to the Versailles and looked at the line and got on a train and came back. <laughs> I just like, I was not about it. I was not about it. But if that's something you want to do, that's a long day. It's exhausting. There's lines. You're absorbing a lot. It takes mental focus. It takes physical stamina. It is a day you need to kind of prep for. Pack some water. Ugh, I just don't go. It's up to you. You might love it. But you can also say, you know what? This is one of my favorite things in Paris down here. It's the museum of uh, the circus museum. And it's like this amazing, crazy circus stuff from like the 1890s. And it maybe. Maybe I was gonna go to Versailles, but I woke up and it was raining and I didn't feel like it. So I'm gonna come down here, you know? And then you, but you've got a plan. You can zig, you can zag. Like that is the great thing about having this plan. Day four, now you've like, you come back and maybe today you're gonna be a little bit more relaxed. Um, day four is green. Uh, so yeah, so this is the day where I'm gonna sleep in maybe because yesterday was a thing. Take a train over to this park. Maybe go onto the little island to, you know, at Bois de Bologna, there's a nice little park. And then either I'll take a train or if I'm feeling strong, I'm going to walk over to the 16th and on the Trocadero and look at the Eiffel Tower from this vantage point. It's super beautiful. And then maybe I'm going to just like find a sandwich and sit on the Champs du Mars. Do you see? I, I, I'm not trying to build an itinerary or tell you what to do in Paris. My point is how you gauge these rising and the falling of your focus of your energy and how to change it up if you know but you kind of group things so that it makes sense for how you spend your time so you're not wasting time and it makes sense for being able to get the most out of something and pairing something that takes focus with something that's passive um you know i also have Right here, this is the stat, you know, this original, not the original, but the copy, the, the small Statue of Liberty is down here. So who knows? Maybe I feel like walking and I'll go see it. And if not, oh, well, I knew it was there. And then finally, dive. Well, you know what? I'm leaving tomorrow. So this is my big energy day. And so maybe this is the day that I I get up and um, I can, like, I go to the Musée d'Orsay, favorite museum. It still takes a ton of energy. Go and do what you can. Then maybe you have a lunch at, at, at Le Camier. It's great. You can sit outside, have a have a prosecco, have a champagne. Um, and then maybe I'm going to pick up. I'm going to walk over to the Latin Quarter and pick up some macarons. And then I'm going to sit in the Luxembourg Garden and just like stare. Maybe I'll go back and have a nap now. And since it's my final night, I'm going to flat splash out and I'm going to go to Le Fermet Mabouf. And it's a really beautiful like restaurant. But again. I want you guys to see, and please put questions, please ask me in the comments, because I don't want to overwhelm you with, oh my God, now I have to go do these things in Paris, because that's not the point. But I just really want to share with you how to manage your energy, how to manage your time, how to make an itinerary. Um, I'm going to go back. Um, let's see. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, let's see. Nugget, consider your energy for the for the energy levels for each day. And that's the thing. You can also, once you have these days planned, planned out, if you wake up the next day and you're like, no, not going to happen, you know all the things you could do. You know it's like a buffet that's totally available to you. And now you, you it's so easy to kind of mix and match. And so like that's what I, I want you guys to really take away is the idea of like have these things on your list that are nice to see. Um, and and don't and but leave room for surprises, right? And also, you know, build this entire this entire itinerary and then throw it away because it's going to be here and you're going to remember. I don't want you to feel like you're trapped because it's the opposite. You have so much freedom and, you know, you can make that plan and then you can change it. And it's really about making sure that you don't, you get what you came for, right? So hopefully that's helpful. Um, let's see, make sure that I, let's see. I love Sandrina's. Yes, Sandrina's here, are probably one of our resident France experts. Um, the palace is amazing. Yeah, see, everybody's kind of giving some tips. Um, but, <laughs> yeah, Maureen. I know, right? She just planned my trip to Paris at the end of June. <laughs> I'll send you the map, Lori. Um, but you know that what I do also, um, yeah, and Kristen, you see how I have the, like, I have it color coded. Now, listen, 
I, my brain works in mysterious ways. It gets super pedantic, but for me, building that organization, or as I talk about that organization phase, actually allows me to feel relaxed when I'm there and to know that there's always something I could do if I wanted to. And the amount of times that I've gotten excited about stuff and then been like, well, like the time I went to Versailles, it turned around. <laughs> But you know what? I, I made that choice. I didn't find out later that I missed out on something so cool that I was disappointed, right? So what I actually do, I take this another step further, is I print out a paper calendar. Um, I, you, you know, you have a, depending on what um, platform you use, what different, um, you know, if it's Word or if it's how, whatever you use on your computer, you can just get a template for the month. Um, I, I think I wind up going to, I think it's called like calendar, labs or calendar.labs or one, two, three, I'll find the link and I'll put it in the notes as well. And then I'll print the month out. And for me, it really helps to just take a pencil and go, okay, arrive this day. Okay. Three days here. Then I'm going to go from there. I'm going to go to Normandy for two days. And then I find out that made no sense at all. And then I'll erase it and change it. But as long as I know, okay, I can, it also helps me figure out how many days if I'm going to do you know, like in Albania trip that I'm planning. When I first had it, it made, I got excited about a few things and then I realized it made no sense. I was down here and then I was up here and then I was up here and then I was down here. And so once you can see it, then you go, oh no. And as soon as I have all this done, A, for me, it's super fun because it's travel dreaming, right? And it's the excitement of the possibility that anything can happen. And then B, once it's done, you kind of already have reservations. You sort of know what you're doing. And um, and then you can just wing it, but wing it with this fabulous foundation. So, all right, I wanna make sure I got all of your questions. Um, I like how I like how I've inspired everyone to go to Paris. A cruise on the Seine. Yeah, I did a, did I do a cruise on the Seine or did it, was it the Dordogne? I can't remember, I, had a, I did a river cruise. I think Jane, you were asking me about that. It was super fun. And look, there is absolutely something to be said about someone else doing this for you, which is something that I might start offering when I get back from all my travel this August. So if it sounds like if it's something that you are like, Juliana, I don't have time to do this crap. Hit me up and uh, and we'll talk. Um, I don't have any plans for it yet, but this is my superpower. It's kind of ridiculous that I don't help other people just have the most amazing time. So, um, but we'll talk more about that in August when I come home. Um, yeah, this is a big thing too. Like Fiona, this is about managing your energy. If you're not a morning port person, don't schedule something that leaves early. You know, sometimes you might have to, but don't do that to yourself every day. Um, let's see, Kathy. Yeah. Paper is my jam, <laughs> you know, and there's something, there's very much something about And I've talked about this before, you know, what comes from, you know, from your brain to your arm actually stimulates a different part of your thinking capacity than when you're just staring at a phone where you get super distracted or when you're staring at your screen. So allow yourself to use paper and pencil once in a while. Um, Okay, so let's see. I'm just making sure before I move. I'm glad I'm not the only one who uses a paper calendar. It is, right? Right, Sandra? Visuals for the win. Uh, Like, we shouldn't be keeping this in our head. We'll go mad. Get it out of your head so that you can be present. Otherwise, your brain is just a machine that's just worrying. Um, by using the great, great tips, let's see. Yes, that's yeah. By using those great tips, it's so much easier, and it's so much, then you can relax. Exactly. Sandrine is so gracefully uh, commented. Ask her for Paris. So if you guys have more Paris questions, Sandrine is right here in the comments. You can uh, you can hit her up. Um, let's see. What is what else do we have? Oh, Kristen. This system is much better than just writing a list of everything you want to do and then realizing nothing is closed. I get that detailed sometimes. When I realize specifically that I want to go to certain museums on certain days, I do put the hours in because I don't, I do not want to walk or take a train all the way somewhere and then realize that it's Tuesday and they're always closed on Tuesdays. The other thing about a lot of museums, especially in Europe, is they have one night a week during the summer where they're open till nine or 10 o'clock at night. So you could have dinner and then you could go walk around and you know just take in an hour of something just for fun. So if there's a museum you really want to see but you don't want to do like museum, then this is another kind of fun way to make a night of it after you have after you eat so you know if you look up those hours and on your phone well, you're not heads down here you're up here absorbing everything um let's see 
Let's see. Don't go mad. That's right. Don't go mad. Um, yes, Tammy. I like <laughs> travel dreaming is fun. Or as Beth says, just let Juliana do it. Just let Juliana plan it. Okay. So don't forget, um, if you want notes for today, and if you want, you asked for notes for last week, they're coming. Hopefully you'll get them by tomorrow at the latest. If you want notes for today, for this kind of two-parter, make sure you put notes in the comments and you'll get some of this information. And uh, well, you'll get all of the information. What am I talking about? Um, and there's still time for you to enter the giveaway, which is the really cool flex flap uh, holder for your phone or your tablet that will help you watch hands-free on the plane. You'll just tuck into the seat, uh, the, what are these things called? See, I lose all my words after, <laughs> after 1230. <laughs> um, your tray table. Um, so just make sure you put nugget and anything else that you've heard or thought about that resonated and share. I love when you guys share because it, uh, it really helps everyone else see what's amazing out there. Plus, who knows, you could say something funny and then someone else is like, you're really funny in the comments. And then, you know, you have a compliment. Um, so what did we talk about today? This was part two of my trip planning series. So last week was discovery and edit. This week was organization and coordination. And first we talked about why do you need to, tr to plan your travel? ahead of time. Um, number one, don't miss what you came for. Don't show up somewhere and realize that you could have seen or done something, but you just didn't look it up. Number two, don't waste your time planning while you're there. Don't, that, and I, that's, you know, don't sit around and be like, oh, what do I do tonight? Let me start Googling. No, don't do that. Number three, Freedom. So when you plan ahead, your brain is free to be spontaneous and you are able to easily pivot and change plans, but you know you already have like a, an entire like treasured, seriously, my dogs just, sorry about that camera bounce. Can you guys like chill? <laughs> you can, you have the freedom to change your plans and you have the freedom to be spontaneous, which is key when you travel. And number four, restoration. Because if you're, if you're, moving out of that sympathetic response of response and activity and moving into the parasympathetic, you're allowing your nervous system to become parasympathetic and go into rest and digest, then you are in a position to actually feel restored on your trip. Okay. So those are the four reasons why we plan. I broke all this down today in my head. Are you guys proud of me? <laughs> um, then we talked about the, the two keys today to planning the itinerary, which is the organization phase. And that's like how to use my maps to visualize all the things you've decided on. And then number two, the coordination phase where we put it all together. And so most importantly, if you walk away with anything today, what I want you to take away are the four factors to help you figure this out, to help you coordinate your itinerary. And that is how much physical energy will you have on any given day? How much physical energy will an activity take? How much mental attention will something take? Focused versus passive. And then balance those. Continue to move back and forth and balance those. Number three, your absorption rate. Where do you get overstimulated? Don't do several museums in one day. So don't do things that take that, ener that physical men energy or that mental attention. And then number four, your processing rate. Allow yourself to actually stop, slow down, just sit in a park, have a coffee, go back to, you know, go grab a book, travel journal, just take a nap. It's okay. Process what you've been doing because you'll be so refreshed that you'll be able to do more. Okay. So I want you to remember those four things, those four factors when planning. Um, and that, my friends, is the second part of how to plan a trip. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Hopefully it was helpful. Let me know in the comments. Um, yes, Beth, exactly. Do not wait until you're there to plan. I love, you guys are like on it. You are on it. Um, thank you, Lori. Thank you so much. Um, so don't forget, if this still feels overwhelming for you, I got you because this is what I do. This like is I, I this is so instinctual for me and that's why I started planning trips to bring you along to alleviate your time spent creating trips and just come with me because I've already created three 
amazing trips this year. There's two to Poland and it closes tomorrow. So if you want to go to Poland with me June 6th through the 16th or August 29th through September 8th, you have about 28 hours to make that decision. And because I did take time <laughs> to set this up, I want to share with you, you're getting all three pieces of this gorgeous, gorgeous Delcy luggage. I just want to show it to you again in case. This is only heavy because there's a third piece of luggage in it, but amazing. This is for Poland. If you haven't done Poland, it's got like the weight. I really need a bigger screen to make this happen. You have like a weight indicator. It's got like the best zipper pulls ever. They're super easy to pull around. It, see, it's got this nice grip. They expand, they have inside, they have an interior. Uh, that they have an entire other piece of luggage. This interior zips out so you can wash it. And they have, let me put this down for a second. They honestly have the best spinner wheels I have ever spun in my life. So this is actually um, a partnership with myself and Delcy Paris Luggage. They, uh, we are gifting this to you if you book the Poland trip. And also if you book the Georgia trip, which ends in uh, two weeks from tomorrow. So again, you wanna do something amazing this summer, come on one of these trips I've already planned, just uh, send me a private message. Um, I promise you, and there's a lot of my guests in the comments, they can tell you how fun my trips are. So there you go, come with me. Um, and also I have Slovenia, the world's most fairy tale delicious place. That is July uh, 3rd through the 9th. And the women on that are also like the other trips. Like I know most of, I know almost everybody on these trips at this point, everybody's amazing. You don't need a travel buddy, just come along. You're gonna make so many amazing friends. Everyone, again, who has been on one of my trips can attest it. Um, yep, see Patricia, who's coming to Poland with us? So you still have time to get in on that. Um, now let's pick a winner. Very excited who's gonna win this. Now, I, uh, I'm i gonna scroll through and stop randomly. I wish I had some one of you like that could just yell stop. Um, but sorry, that was on a, was not on a nugget. One. Kristen, Kristen McTeague. I don't think you've won anything yet, have you Kristen? So Kristen, you get the flex flap tray table holder. Um, and I know that you are in the United States, so it will be easy to ship it to you. Um, that is today's show. Um, let's make sure there's anything else that I didn't miss. I saw somebody, I just saw a hey from someone I hadn't talked to yet. Just trying to make sure we got everybody. Well, if I didn't catch you, it's because I was busy downloading all of this amazing information. Um, but I will get you in the comments. I will come back, so please leave a comment for me, even if you're watching this on the replay. I always come back and make sure that everybody uh, got all of their questions answered. Um, yeah, okay. Just make sure there's so much good stuff. Check out each other's comments. You guys have got so many great tips and so much great information to share. You can always learn from each other as well. So I will be back next Thursday, this is my last show of the season. I won't be back doing Facebook Lives until August maybe. So, cause I'm gonna be on the road for the next two months. So next week is my final show. So please join me. That is May the 12th. And I'm gonna have a special guest, Sherry Ott from Ott's World, if you know her, if you don't. She's one of my travel companions. We've been to South America together. We've been to... I forget. We'll have to go over some of our antics. We've done some some crazy things together. Sherry and I stayed up like at at um, sixteen thousand feet. I can't even remember what the kilometers is for that uh, altitude in the back of a restaurant in the Atacama in the Andes Mountains. <laughs> We've done some some crazy stuff around the world. Anyway, anyway, Sherry is going to be starting a new project. You guys, if you follow along with her, she is going to be finishing her father's dream of biking, bicycling between U.S. state capitals. And that's going to be starting at the end of May. So she's going to tell us all about her project and how she's kind of fulfilling a dream her father had, finishing it for him. Um, so please join us next week for that. And um, yeah, okay. Oh, hey, Loretta. 
<laughs> I see someone's popping in at the last minute. You're going to have to back up and watch the whole thing. Um, absolutely wonderful. Thank you again. I'm Juliana Dever, travel experiential travel expert and cultural immersion trip creator. Travel with me this summer. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you had, you really got something out of today's show and I want you to have a great weekend. I love you. Thank you. Bye-bye.